So the first thing that we're going to do is we think that our house might be haunted or that we're experiencing paranormal activity in our home is we're going to remain calm and we're not going to panic. We're going to try to gather evidence. Is it really haunted or is, you know, the furnace making noises and making us think that we're hearing ghost noises? Is the the video that I took or the photograph I snapped that has a spooky face in it, is that actually paranormal or is it, you know, just, just coincidence, pareidolia, me thinking that I saw a face, but it's actually my mind thinking that it's a face. There's a number of logical reasons that people can experience things out of the ordinary. We want to cover those first, but the simplest and easiest way to start is you can do your own investigation. Camera on your phone or set out a digital audio recorder or an old tape recorder if you have one and just let it go in the area that you're experiencing phenomenon. See if anything else happens. See if, you know, something moves on its own. See if you get any EVP. And if you do, well, then maybe you have something and it's time to move on to the next step. So you've gathered your evidence and now you're going to review it and you need to review it very carefully to try to establish if there's actual activity or if whatever you have gathered is logical in explanation uh, if you have EVP or you have video anomalies something moves on its own a voice says something and you were not there or nobody else was there to make that voice you may have activity and you may want to prolong your experiments to see how severe and how frequent your activity is. And then based off of what you find, um, you go from there. Now, I will say, when you're doing your investigation, your own personal investigation, you should probably use a video recorder or a audio recording device at first if you aren't experienced to figure out what's going on. I would not recommend... Uh, metaphysical tools uh, for the beginner or for someone with no experience with those things. Dowsing rods, Ouija boards, pendulums, crystals, and other scrying tools can be ambiguous and confusing when it comes to evidence, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So there's a chance that they're going to make you jump to more conclusions than you already have and not give you a clear answer. Now you're going to decide what you want to do about it. You've established that there's activity in your home or there's not activity in your home. If there's not activity in your home or business or wherever it is that's being haunted, whatever, right? It's, it's a normal day and we're going to carry on. We're not going to live in fear or apprehension. We're going to move on. If it is, however, um, something out of the ordinary, something paranormal, unexplained we're going to move on to the next step and that is based off the evidence you've gathered and based off of your intuition and the things you feel especially if fear is an overwhelming feeling that you're having in the place that you live or apprehension or danger what am i going to do if there is no real fear and you're just kind of curious and little things happen there that really don't bother you and nobody in the house is being bothered the best thing really to do is to leave it alone. Just let it be. There have been people coexisting with spirits for as long as there have been people and spirits. So just go on your merry way. They'll do their thing. Now, it's good to keep in mind, if you decide you're going to remodel or change the place that you're at in some way in the future, sometimes activity will, will pick up when these things happen. When changes happen or even changes in your own life, can spur new activity or activity that is more intense than than what you were experiencing before keep it in mind if you have evidence and then you may decide that you need to act on it after that so now you've decided that your activity is intolerable in your business or your home or wherever is haunted and you've decided that you need to do something about it and what is the next thing to do? Well, uh, a lot of people will want to peer review the their own evidence. And that's fine. I think getting a few objective friends or people you know, or even people with experience in the field to look at your evidence and kind of tell you what they think is a good idea. Now, I'll tell you what isn't a good idea. 
and where you're going to get a lot of confusion. You might not want to go post your evidence or your story on Facebook or on message boards if you are seeking legitimate help for your problem. Because when you go on Facebook or you go on a page or a website or a forum where people post a lot of opinion about these things, everybody is an expert. Now, I will tell you first and foremost, I am not an expert on this. I'm giving you my take from 15 years or so of experience off and on doing my own paranormal investigations, investigating with other groups and, you know, the things I've experienced and using my own common sense and logic when it comes to these topics. But when you go on Facebook, everybody has a theory on what your issue is. You will find a lot of definitive responses to whatever, whatever it is you're dealing with. People will claim that they're psychics. People will claim that they're sensitives. People will, you know, be paranormal investigators. They'll say they're that. They'll look at your video, and they will not have been there. They will not have reviewed anything beyond it. They can give you an opinion. That's fine. But when they start to definitively say, oh, my God, you've got a malevolent spirit by looking at, you know, 20 seconds of video, you got to really be skeptical there. When they're saying the voice here is clearly evil, or it's a shadow person, or it's a demon, or, you know, you've got an incubus attacking you in the night based off of the way this thing looks. Come on, let's get serious. You cannot get a definitive explanation from someone sitting on a computer 5,000 miles away. What I would recommend, which is get a paranormal investigation group to collaborate with you, to kind of back up the evidence you have to, to gather their own and see if they can find more and kind of try to figure out what's going on. Now you can go on Google. Sometimes you can go on your phone book. You can ask friends, ask people you know, if they know anybody that, you know, does paranormal investigation. Now, again, you need to scrutinize these people when you go onto their website, get a feel for what they're saying. If they charge you money for investigating, I would highly recommend that you think twice. Most paranormal investigation groups out there are doing it as a community service and will do it for no money required. Sometimes they'll take a donation. That's usually up to the homeowner or the person they're working with. Um, but if they're saying you got to pay this X amount of fee for them to come out and do a paranormal investigation in your home, keep looking. Because very simply, there are people that will do it for free. There are, there are experienced, knowledgeable people in the field that will do it for free and will give you good common sense results that help you resolve your problem so we've come to the place where we have to decide that we're going to clear our home it's intolerable the activity is too much to handle so we're going to do it ourselves to start with this is probably the best course of action and usually the most successful now if you're too uncomfortable with this and you just can't do it yourself and you're the only one experiencing it and you own a home by yourself you can ask someone else uh, you could ask clergy or someone that deals in the metaphysics to help you but you really need to scrutinize those people before you ask them the most effective person in a living space in a place where a family dwells or an individual dwells is a person that either owns the home or rents the home or leases the home or in essence, the head of the household, the head of the family. That person needs to be calm and assertive and firm when they do this activity of cleansing or clearing. You need to stay focused and you can't waver. You, you don't want fear to overwhelm you of this. You need to be, to be honest, a little angry at this thing for imposing upon you. You're going to demand that this entity leave now before you get started going through the house leave a window or door open so the entity can leave your home the symbolism of this matters and the physical opening of the window or door can matter as well it needs a place to escape both metaphysically and physically just do it it might seem strange um, but that is what i would suggest now you're going to go through every corner of the house and you can use uh, religious 
iconography that you have or, and are comfortable with. You can burn a white candle while you do this, but understand that you are engaging in a ritual. Uh, just don't go about it willy-nilly. You need to be serious. Uh, now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend other metaphysical means if you're inexperienced with them. A lot of people will say, take some sage and smudge, and I just shake my head and I get a little concerned that people don't understand the gravity of smudging and even burning incense sometimes. You, you are, sage is an element that is, yes, it's used to banish. It's been used for centuries to, to banish spirits. But at the same time, it's also been used to conjure spirits and to commune with spirits. So if you don't know what you're doing, and you're smudging or you're burning sage and walking through your house trying to clear it. You can just as easily sometimes, if you don't know how to go about doing it, make something worse or invite other things in. It's happened before and it's, you know, that's why blessings and smudgings and even you doing your own or others doing your own clearing or cleansing don't always work. Again. Go through every corner of your home or business and firmly tell the entity that it's not welcome, that it needs to leave, and to do no harm to anyone as it leaves. Send it away, out the door, out the window. Uh, say your prayers. You can use the name of your deity to help bless your home. If you don't have a deity, you can just assert your own will. Believe it or not, you have a lot of energy within yourself that can help clear these things uh if you are uncomfortable with using a religious practice or you aren't religious you can still do it on your own so go ahead and give it a try and if you are not successful we can move on to the next step so now after you've finished your cleansing we have to wait a few days to see if the activity has stopped. And if it has not, then it's time for the next step. The thing you can do next is to call for some help. Um, so paranormal groups, a lot of times, will use psychics or sensitives. And sometimes these people can help cleanse a house or determine, you know, what at least what is going on. If there's more information that needs to gather, be gathered, they can help along with the paranormal researchers. Sometimes you need to dig uh, historically, do research to find out specifically uh, what you're dealing with or to try to figure out the most reasonable explanation of what you're dealing with and to attack the problem from... Uh, things that make sense to what's going on. So if you find that you had a, you know, late 19th century occult uh, black magic person that was doing ritual in your home, you might need to do some specific things to try to clear that out. And, you know, saying a, a little Christian prayer with a white candle might not do the trick. So what you would want to do is you can call clergy or you can call metaphysical experts like psychics or mediums to come help you and clear your home. Uh, it, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. If you want to go to some uh, to an entity that you share a belief with, like uh, a pastor from a church or a rabbi or a priest or religious person of some form, a shaman, you can use these. Uh, people to help clear your home some of them may charge a nominal fee or you know something reasonable just use sense because even among clergy there are charlatans and there are scam art my experience has shown me that psychics and sensitives and mediums that i've worked with that are the most successful that tend to be the most genuine are the humble and more laid back common sense people that will tell you and work with you on what's going on and kind of make you feel comfortable. Now, whoever it is, whoever you come across, be careful, take what they have to say with a grain of salt and require results. If your house isn't, isn't cleansed after this, you need to let them know, review them online, do whatever you need to do. 
to help maintain the legitimacy of the community because out there, like I said, there's anybody and everybody can claim they are whatever. People will do it for money and people will do it for attention to feel special. That's the same that goes along with going online and telling people your problems with the paranormal and having everybody under the sun tell you what's going on when they haven't got the slightest clue. They just want attention. Be careful with what you're dealing with. Um, if you need help from the clergy, get help. Um, if you don't have a religious belief and you're still dealing with these phenomenon, you know, you're probably examining your spiritual belief at that point. Find something that feels comfortable for you. Uh, go back to your childhood if you're comfortable with the religion you were raised with. If you didn't have a religion you were raised with as a child, sometimes f people feel more comfortable with uh, people that are pretty open to all beliefs that fit in, like Buddhists, for example. Uh, Zen Buddhism, Buddhists, they're pretty open. They kind of fit in philosophically to everything. So you could ask a Buddhist priest for help. You could ask... Uh, you could ask a psychic or a medium. Those are sometimes the more comfortable choice for people that aren't religious. Uh, sometimes new age pagan ritual is comfortable, more comfortable for people. Whatever you feel the most comfortable with or the most attached to, that's the kind of clergy or route you should go trying to cleanse this. And... I would say sometimes it takes effort. Sometimes it takes several cleansings or clearings. Sometimes it takes uh, a lot of different exploration of different methods. Sometimes you will need to go through several different religious entities, like a, a priest or a rabbi or a shaman, to try to clear something, to try to get to the bottom of what exactly it is that's going on. And if you do, that's fine. Sometimes it'll take time. Uh, but a lot of times things will cease or the activity will go way down with just one or a couple of cleansings or uh, investigations um, if if you do continue to have activity after the clergy has come you need to keep exploring uh, finding information on your property and looking for other people that can help you like I said you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on self-proclaimed end all to all evil beings, but I understand people will get desperate. There are cases where people have had to move from their homes. There are cases where people have been followed by entities, but those are in the vast minority of cases. Usually these things are resolvable, and I would say any haunting event, any supernatural event that is causing you distress can be resolved in some way. Um, the the most drastic things would be things like exorcisms and and having to move or destroy a property in some cases. Even that doesn't always work, but those are, like I said, by far, and they are in the vast minority. So for all intents and purposes, these steps should help you clear your problem. 